The trailer must be on a level working area. Wheels must be chocked to prevent the trailer from rolling. If the trailer is not connected to a vehicle, use a jack stand to support the tongue. Do not depend on a tongue jack with wheels to support the trailer. Before bleeding and after bleeding the brakes, check the emergency stop to make sure it is in the release position. On the original tie-down model 66 actuator, use two screwdrivers as shown to pull down the release catch on the underside of the actuator. Newer models of the tie-down model 66 have an external catch for the emergency stop on the side of the actuator. If the cable coming out of the actuator does not have a ball suede showing on the cable, the emergency stop is already in a release position. If a ball suede can be seen on the cable, release the emergency stop by lifting the flat spring as shown to allow the ball suede to go back into the actuator housing. Next step is to check the master cylinder reservoir for the proper fluid level. Add DOT type 3 brake fluid if necessary to within 3 eighths of an inch from the top of the master cylinder. Hand bleeding the Model 66 is accomplished with a medium sized flat blade screwdriver. Insert the screwdriver into the hole on top of the actuator and pump the master cylinder as shown. A second person places a wrench on the brake bleed valve. While holding pressure in the master cylinder, unscrew the bleed valve to allow any air to be forced out of the brake lines. This is generally repeated several times on each wheel to make sure the lines are purged of any air. Add brake fluid to the master cylinder as needed to keep the master cylinder full at all times during the bleeding process. Power bleeding is a faster and more convenient method to bleed brakes. Connect the power bleeder to the master cylinder and open the pressure valve. Open and close the bleed valve on the brake assembly to purge air from the system. Lift the trailer with a jack until there is sufficient clearance for the wheel and tire to turn freely. Place the jack stand under the frame behind the wheel. Remove the rubber inspection caps on the rear side of the brake assembly. Using a brake spoon or flat blade screwdriver, tighten the star adjuster until the wheel cannot turn. Loosen the star adjuster 8 to 10 clicks while turning the wheel in a forward rotation. There should be free movement with a slight drag felt when rotating the wheel. Repeat adjustment process for the other side. Always turn the tire wheel in a forward rotation when adjusting the brakes. Replace the dust caps, remove jack stands, and test drive the trailer. Properly brace the trailer with wheel chocks and jack stands. Remove the tire and drum brake separately, or to save time, remove the tire and brake drum together as a unit. Remove the center cap, locking pin, and castle nut. Place the parts on a towel or in a pan to keep them clean. Hit the tire sharply with your hand to free the wheel assembly from the spindle. Cup your hand over the center of the hub to keep the front bearing from falling out when removing the wheel. Wipe the grease from the spindle to keep from contaminating the brake pads while working with the brake cluster. Inspect the brakes to make sure all parts are tight.
check for leaks at the wheel cylinder, check brake pads for abnormal wear or contamination by grease or brake fluid. Regrease the spindle before replacing the wheel and drum assembly. Insert outer bearing, washer, and castle nut. Adjust bearing by tightening the castle nut while turning the wheel until tight. Back off one quarter turn, lock in place with outer washer and cotter pin.